Hey, what's going on YouTube? Danny here with Danny's Tech Channel. Finally coming back at you to give you some more content that you've been waiting for. So for those of you that continuously watch the channel, um, as you, you would already know, we, my whole family and I moved from the West Coast to the East Coast. We moved from Arizona all the way over here to Virginia. Uh, not quite the West Coast, I guess, but it's, it's pretty close for me. So I wanted to start getting content out here. I apologize ahead of time for all the little hiccups and stuff, but uh, I wanna get right back to it. I guess it's like riding a bicycle. So as soon as I can get back to the content, we'll start spitting it out here and uh, give you the info that you're looking for. All right, so let's take a look at this little item here. This, my friend, is EVGA's XR1 video capture device. Little box, I know, there's not much to it, honestly. It is a direct competitor to all these other capture devices like the Elgato and stuff like that. It does the exact same thing. You plug it into a, a video source and then you plug it into your computer and you can capture from that video source to your computer. So you do need two separate devices, one to play the stream and the other one to capture it. But it, it could be used for multiple types of things. You can plug cameras into it and then a computer and capture the video from the camera, which I can do on mine, which I, I may start doing. And then uh, you capture right to the device from the card. So the price of this is $189.99 USD. Actually, it seems a bit steep, but they're actually on sale and they've been on sale since they came out for $129.99 USD. So that's a huge discount on them. The other streaming capture devices that I found were not this price for what you're getting. It has an HDMI 2.0 connection to it. Both sides are 2.0. It's 1080p 60 FPS video capture. It has 4K 60 FPS pass through and it has 1440p 120 FPS advanced pass through. So who would be most interested in this product in the, the XR1? It's mainly geared towards uh, game streamers or video streamers or whatever, content creators like myself, working professionals, you could be using it for uh, web conferencing and stuff like that because you can hook cameras directly into it for better quality web conferencing. And then uh, you can also daisy chain multiple XR1s together into the same computer. So if I have a camera here, a camera here, and a camera here, and they're all connected to XR1s, I could actually just hit buttons on my keyboard and switch between the devices. So you could almost create your own little broadcast event without a camera crew. Kind of neat. Let's unbox this thing and check out what's inside. So the package to begin with has this nice little foil shine to it. As I said, it's really small. I knew I cut the tape. So, I mean, you flip the box open. Oh, wow. It's, uh, it's extremely lightweight. It, extremely lightweight. Like, it doesn't, doesn't feel like anything. It's got a mirror finish on the front, as you can see. Pretty nice little dots and buttons and stuff to it. Get a quick peel going here. Oh man. Yeah, that's, that's a straight mirror. On the side here, you have your HDMI out. That's going to your device. You also have microphone out and uh, controller out for your uh, your game game controller I don't know why it would be a 3.5 jack that's a little weird you have a USB type C you have a, another HDMI this is your HDMI in and then there's really nothing on the back now this dial does rotate and can push as well it actually has directional it feels like it has directional to be able to select options. So really nice layout there. And then underneath is just your accessory box.
You have your USB 3.0 cable. It's the, it's got a USB-C input end. Let me open this up actually. I think it splits. Yep. So you have USB 3.0 and then it splits into the USB-C or uh, USB 2.0 it looks like. But it's uh, split at both ends on the, the 3.0 end. And you just have a HDMI 2.0 cable. This is not 2.1, 2.0. And then you have a 3.5 audio jack plug and that's it that's all that's included in the box you have a small quick start guide that should be pretty self-explanatory i mean it gives you it's like a easy access thing control dial functions led indications shows you what's supposed to be in the box and then it also gives you device layout of how you would want to set it up for whatever you're doing so today, I'm actually gonna do two of these layouts today. I wanna do this uh, desktop laptop setup thing. And then I also wanna use the game console. I wanna try to hook my PlayStation up to it. See how that'll display as well. So let's throw this thing together and plug it in and see what happens. Okay, so don't, don't mind the mess, really. Don't, don't mind the mess. So. This is the Cyberpunk build. If you haven't seen it, check out the video on it. It's just a, a theme design for Cyberpunk, something that I really wanted to do. And, uh, but this isn't about that. But anyways, so I have Unigen Heaven running on this computer. I needed something that would just loop and continuously go so that I could kind of like show you how this worked out. But uh, this computer is running the actual game and stuff like that. And you can see on the side here, we're getting about 90, anywhere between 80 and 90 FPS uh, using the GPU and everything. It's not using the CPU at all. That's because this device isn't capturing the actual image. I have it plugged in in the back here. My HDMI is coming out of the device, out of the computer, into the XR1 right here. And then the XR1 runs into the capture computer through USB and USB-C, and then it actually follows all the way back out into the back of my monitor. So it's putting no type of stress on the actual device that's running the game, where in this case, it's, it's my Cyberpunk build. So this device is able to game and do whatever it wants to do, and the other device can easily capture the video footage however you would want to do it. I am beyond excited to use this to show you how the BIOS works and how uh, you can tweak little settings and stuff like that to be able to make yours run more efficiently and uh, uh, get some stuff done. So really, really excited to be able to start capturing um, how to do certain things in the BIOS. And then maybe I can do some things with gameplay footage and stuff like that. So for me as a content creator, it is um, really opening up a lot of like avenues as far as what I can do for you guys. And I'm really excited about that. But like I said, I just wanted to showcase how easy it is to set up and what you can do with it. So let's go get a PlayStation and hook it up to this and see how that works as well. Okay, so man, that took me a while. This is like an hour later or so. Um, the PlayStation is set up and uh, I was able to get everything to work. So if you're wondering if the XR1 will work with the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series X, it will. Because uh, they, they put it in their little disclaimer on EVGA's website that it will work with these things. But it was like jumping through hoops. Like it, it let me explain. So you can see here, you know, Spider-Man's running PlayStation 5 hooked into my display. This is a 1080p display, 60 hertz. So it's not super high end or anything like that. I don't have it hooked up to 4K, but I did test it on my TV. It will work with the 4K pass through on the XR1. It's the exact same setup as the computer was. The monitor is running out through HDMI to the XR1, and then it runs from that into the PlayStation. And then obviously my capture system is still, uh, which I'm still recording right now. Let's not do that. Anyway, 
which my capture system is recording through USB-C. So I did a quick swap real quick just to make sure, but um, because I didn't know if the HDMI 2.1 cable that the PlayStation comes with would work, I had my 2.0 cable plugged into it, but it works with either one. You can see that it's still capturing the device here with, and this is the HDMI 2.1 cable. So they're backwards compatible, which I wasn't sure of until right now. So I wanna show you real quick what I had to do to change my settings so that you could play and capture at the same time. If you go up to your settings tab here, you have to go down to system and then I had to go to HDMI and that those two toggles right there, enable HDMI device link and HDCP, they were both turned on out of the box for the PlayStation, like when it first booted up. You cannot leave those enabled because it will not, it black screened for me on OBS. So when I went to boot it up, at first it came on for like t half a second or two seconds and then it black screened. I, I don't know the issue with it. If any of you know it, let me know down in the comments. Uh, but this is just what I've discovered from being, you know, trial and error and everything to let you know. You have to turn both of those toggle switches off in order for it to pick up on your uh, capture card and then display to your um, computer or laptop or whatever you're going to use for it. But it's working now, as you can see. Really happy with how the PlayStation turned out. I think the screen capture looks amazing. I mean, you can see for yourself, both of these images, the one from the computer and the one from Spider-Man, if you look here, are direct screen captures right onto my computer. I think they look fantastic and they really, uh, the XR1 does an amazing job of exactly what it's designed to do. Okay, so you saw that it works with the PC, it works with the PlayStation 5. Pretty incredible to me. I mean, the fact that this little thing is barely over $100 and uh, it can capture from all these different devices. I'm really impressed with it. I, I think it's great. Who is this product for? Is it for you? It could be for a beginning streamer or content creator that doesn't need 4K recording. It, it's small, portable. I mean, you can put this in a backpack and use it for, for whatever you want. My biggest takeaways from this are that it's cheap. It's easy to set up. I mean, they give you really basic, simple instructions in the box. You don't need any extra software to run it besides the capture software that you want to use. So like I said, I was using OBS, as you saw, uh, real easy to just grab the images and uh, capture what I wanted to record. So if you want to check out the EVGA XR1, I'll leave a link in the description below. You can go take a look at it. I just want you to get the best deal. So if you click the link below, it's gonna take you to EVGA's website to get their better prices. And if you're an EVGA Elite member, you can get an even bigger discount. I think it's like another $10 off. So it's like 120 bucks instead of 130 or something like that. But go check it out if you want. I'm gonna use mine for this next video I wanna uh, film. And I've been really excited to get this one done because it's kind of something um, that most, that a lot of people can relate to. It's all about us. It's all about us.